Thank you for that introduction. I thought you guys were going to be sitting in front of me, so I'm going to do my best to go like this. If it looks like I have butterflies in my stomach, I do. Aside from being hot, I feel like I'm here for a big family celebration, and my heart is just racing with excitement for all of you. This is a big moment for a lot of people, and so I want to start off by acknowledging everybody that has played a part to the administration, faculty, and staff, I get a pretty good view as a trustee. And to say you work tirelessly for your students is an understatement. I don't know how you give all that you do at all fields, but educators truly change lives. And we can never say that enough. We sincerely thank you. To the families, both those that are present here today and those that cannot be with us in person, as a parent myself, I know well that we run these marathons alongside of our children. Their lows are your lows and your sleepless nights, and their highs are your mountaintops. And so this is your day too, and I applaud you all. Well done, families. To the main event, the class of 2022, these last two days at Old Fields, Reaching this milestone, no matter why or how you got to Old Fields, will forever be one of the most special, most unforgettable moments of your life. Which is why I say with my whole heart that I am so incredibly honored that you would allow me to join you in celebrating all that you are, your journey, and everything that it took for you to get here. As an OS alum, I can say in part that I know what it has taken for you to get here. Like those that came before you, the many morning meetings, the hours of study hall, the sports commitments, the clubs, assemblies, and performances that you've been in, what it felt like to finally give your senior presentation and pull off a memorable senior prank day that Lama was. <laughs> the breaks and the free days that couldn't come soon enough the traditions that you carried on, green and white nights, May programs, all the sheep on all the hills, and the endless hiding places of the thingamabob. I know that on your road to today, you made friends that you will be connected to for a lifetime. And that one of your final challenges as you leave here is figuring out what you're going to do after graduation when you don't live on the same campus as your best friend anymore. I also know that you probably had to push through when you were homesick, because no matter how you decorate a boarding school room, sometimes you just want to be home. And when you're home, sometimes you just want to be back here, your other home. Now I said I only know in part what it has taken for you to get here, in part because it was more than 20 years ago since I sat where you are now. And while things like spotty cell phone reception in Glencoe haven't changed very much, <laughs> a lot else in our world has. And we could never, ever fully acknowledge all that you are without acknowledging that you have endured a combination of things that none of us have. You went to high school during a pandemic that along with illness disrupted everything that we know introduced us to new depths of uncertainty and at times great loneliness, loss, and grief of all kinds. There are a lot of movies and stories about being in high school, but there weren't too many models for what you were tasked with. You had to figure out how to get the most out of your experience from behind a computer screen and remote schooling, how to adapt to new schedules and distance procedures and precautions we all wish could just magically disappear. You've had to navigate the new normal even though the new normal changes every single day. You've also spent some of the most challenging and confusing years of your life, your teenage years, in a time where social media intensifies and immortalizes everything. There is no OS alum my age, that can tell you honestly, they know what that's been like for you. There is no doubt something magical about being connected to others 
no matter where we are. But I got to work through my messy youth in private for the most part. There was baseline go uh, conflict and gossip. You all had something much different. I didn't have to follow the chatter about me online or the likes and the comments and the follows, unfollows across a dozen platforms. I didn't have to worry about the repercussions of being reshared or going viral. I also didn't face the intense level of pressure that you all have scrolling through a never ending supply of content that'll make you try to compare yourself to somebody's beautifully curated highlight reel. To know who you are and to stay true to who you are in the face of all that is no easy feat and don't let anybody tell you any different. And by the way, if that were not enough, you did all that high school students have to do during a time of incredible unrest in our nation and across the globe. However difficult that has been for the rest of us, there aren't enough words to describe what it must have been like to take in and process all of the recent year's events while being away at boarding school. You had to focus in class, take exams, prepare yourself for work or college as the news delivered heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak. You had to try and just be young and have some fun and decipher what all the calls for social, environmental, and racial justice meant for you and those around you. You asked really hard questions and demanded even better answers, even and especially right here on campus. And then my favorite part, you led by fierce example. You didn't settle for business as usual. It was you that called your school to be the very best version of itself. When Oldfield said it was having tough conversations, it was you that led and engaged in them. You taught each other and you taught the adults around you. You shouldered your own burdens and you moved this school forward, standing the tallest for the most vulnerable of our community with incredible courage, humility, and largeness of heart. All of these things are so unique to your high school experience to what it means for you to be an OS alum. And that still doesn't include all of the additional deeply personal challenges, winding roads, accomplishments that make up your story. Some of you have overcome adversities that would just floor us if we truly understood. I've caught glimpses of some of them over the last few years. I've listened to your teachers and advisors tell story after story about your tenacity and your resilience. I've seen you use your voices in open forums with the bravery, wisdom, and empathy that many folks twice your age haven't yet mastered. And I've been privileged enough to spend time with a number of you. So I can say with full confidence that the journeys represented here today are so incredibly commendable. You are not here by chance. Today didn't happen without sacrifice for you. You gave and you grew, not only in your knowledge, but into yourself, the fullness of yourself. And here you are before us victorious, a class all of your own. Which makes my job here today very interesting because what do you share with such a unique group of young adults that have already lived so much life and been through everything that they've been through? I think the expectation, as it is for any graduation type speaker, is that I'll gift you with some piece of coveted information that you'll take with you when you leave here. And I promise you that I looked long and hard. I took a deep dive within, I took inventory, I rummaged around looking to see what you could use. But the truth is that what you need is not inside me, it's inside you. And that's the best secret that I can share with you that you already have exactly what you need to succeed in whatever comes next for you. And that tool is your story. And that story is that you have already overcome. All the things that I described and more, which are only the tip of the iceberg, that's what I want you to take with you and to know deep in your bones when you finish walking down Graduation Hill tomorrow. That's what's going to give you the strength and the courage to face whatever you encounter next. I've built up a decent resume in my life. Ivy League school, successful career, tangible stuff, committees, awards. But when things get tough, when I'm trying to get from point A to point B, 
I don't look to the plaques or the titles that I've acquired as my point of inspiration. And while I always appreciate being appreciated, my work doesn't depend on the recognition that others give a shinier version of myself. What's gotten me from success to success and happiness to happiness is no trick I learned in college or in an office. In fact, I made it through college, the corporate world, and the ups and downs of life because of the strength rooted in my story. And the heart of my story is being a young, poor, brown girl from the South Bronx that most everybody wrote off, but who believed with desperation that a good education was the way out of an environment of extreme poverty and violence. That story is the weapon that wins my every fight. And because I know that if I could make it with every odd stacked against me there, I can do anything. When I do get to bragging, it's always about me being from the South Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> I never miss an opportunity to speak on it with my head high, no matter how many funny stares it gets me. Because where I come from, my story is my superpower. I get everything I need into everywhere I need to go when I think about what my younger self, your age, overcame and the road that she paved for me to have what I have today. I know that I am capable because I remember that story. In college, I felt intimidated. Everybody was a genius, and I didn't know if I had what it took to compete or to finish. When I started my career in finance, I wasn't really sure if I could break in because all of the really successful people were men and people who had a natural reach that I couldn't even dream of. How did I push through and succeed? I remembered the little girl from the South Bronx. I had already slayed giants, and that was proof enough that I could do it again. My wish for you is only the smoothest of roads. And if you manage to find one without a single bump, I want you to come find me and tell me how you cracked the code. <laughs> but more than likely, and whatever is next for you, no matter the specifics of your particular story, no matter how much or how little you start off with, you are also going to have those moments where the ground beneath you feels a little shaky and all sorts of other challenges. You're going to find yourself, at some point in your life, the only person in the room of your gender, identity, background, belief system, religion, conviction, age, and someone somewhere, intentionally or not, is going to make you question if you really belong and if you really deserve that thing that you worked so hard for. There will be spaces where your talents aren't acknowledged or accepted, and when you find yourself there, what are you going to do to push through? I want you to remember everything that led up to this day, your story, everything that you endured, every obstacle that you demolished to sit in this seat. I want you to remember all of the giants that you have already slain. Because even if I didn't know what I know about you, I would still know that you had to get past some giants to get here. Because we all face them, no matter where we come from. I want you to remember that you already have the receipts to show that you can do the hard things, that you can set a goal and achieve it, that every single thing that makes you you is good enough, is more than enough to get you to a finish line. And not only do I want you to remember that story, I want you to honor it. How do we do that? Embrace the fullness of yourself with pride. The fullness. That means not just the shiny parts or the parts that other people like and celebrate. It means the parts of you that you feel are rough around the edges or that make people a little bit uncomfortable. The parts of you that you're still not too sure about yet that you find yourself the quickest to judge, I want you to love on those parts all the more and give them the grace and the gentleness that they deserve. When you speak about yourself, I want you to do so boldly and with intention. You have to champion you. It's great when other people do it, but you have to champion you. Because if you sell yourself short, people will believe you. I had to evaluate myself once for work and I selected the highest mark available which was essentially defined as setting a new standard of excellence. <laughs> well, when I did that, as you can imagine, I was asked to defend it because only a small portion of people get that approved. 
Now, I could have taken that in, second guessed myself and said, well, I guess I am just okay. But I didn't believe that deep down. So I wrote up all of my reasons and submitted all of the ways that I truly felt I was the best to have ever done it. And you know what happened when it was revealed? It was approved. <laughs> what I didn't know at the time was that that evaluation was tied to my promotion, to my bonus. So if I had sold myself short and downplayed my accomplishments, I would have missed out. I don't want you to miss out on anything. Know that fear is okay. We have to dispel this myth that so many of us hold on to. We think that when we finally reach a certain level of achievement or confidence, that we simply don't feel fear anymore. Or that to feel it says something negative about us. Like something is lacking. You start doubting yourself and your ability if you buy into that. There are plenty of times that I worry about the what ifs, that I get knots in my stomach and I feel nervousness. But the only thing any of that says about any of us is that we're human. It is okay to feel afraid. Just don't let it paralyze you. That is the key, to not be stagnant. Respect the fear when it pops up. Let it alert you to whatever needs your attention and then put one informed foot in front of the other. Now those three speak to the internal, but what about the external? We don't live without being impacted or influenced by those outside of ourselves. So I want you to find what author Lovey Ajayi Jones and so many other greats call your helpers. Find your helpers. I promise you, I promise you, that there is always someone around who believes in you, who has strong shoulders for you to lean on right when you need it most, someone who can want someone who can and wants to open a door for you, who has the exact encouragement and wisdom you need to take a step forward, who will speak up for you in rooms where it matters, someone who will plant a seed for the exact tree that you need down the road. Sometimes this someone is not always who you expect, and sometimes it's various people over the course of your life. Sometimes it'll be someone completely random, someone you barely know, someone you don't even particularly like or who think likes you. I want you to keep your ears and your heart and your eyes open for your helpers because we never get through the good or the challenging alone. As I close, I leave you with one of my favorite lines from the book Beloved by Toni Morrison. And that is simply and profoundly that you are your best thing. Take that in, bury it deep within your heart, do whatever you can to make it take root so that no storm can shake it the way you perceive and treat yourself. You are your best thing, class of 2022. That trail that you leave behind you of hard won, hard won victories, honor that great story and greet any new giants and all of your tomorrows with the confidence that you have done this before and you did it so well. We have all been witness and we will be cheering you on as you do it again and again and again. Congratulations.